Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Today, we're here with another NBA debate, another start bench cut. The last one I did was so long ago. I'm here with my guy, who I've done a lot of debates with now at this point, uh, my guy Brandon. You can also find him as Sam Darnold's forehead on Twitter. Um, I mean, how, how you doing, bro? I'm good. Ready to debate. Yeah. <laughs> Short, street, short, sweet, and to the point. Um, but uh, yeah, without further ado, so today, the debate, we're doing a start bench cut with the players of Ben Wallace, Dwight Howard, and Yao Ming. Kind of like a 2000 center edition um, of three guys who, you know, at least are Hall of Famers or more, most likely going to be Hall of Famer and Dwight Howard. So, I mean, without further ado, we can go backwards here, starting with our cut, then bench, then start. Uh, I'll give you the floor first to tell us who you're going to cut. Yeah, when you gave me this list of the three guys, I was pretty excited because like three guys who we both grew up with because that was our time, and they are they're different players, but it's pretty close between the three as they're all Hall of Fame guys and have their own accomplishments. So my cut is Yao Ming, who I feel like you might disagree with, but. He had a great peak, 20 points, 10 rebounds, probably for about four, five years. But as your favorite player, LeBron James says, availability is the best ability. And I don't know if this list is meant more for their peak or their career, but I think I would just take the other two as guys who I trust to get through a playoff run as they've both done it in their careers. And they both have long, good careers and the other two are defensive guys, more defensive guys, and yeah, it's more of a seven foot seven scorer, and obviously he's gonna get his rebounds and blocks because he's seven foot seven. Yeah, one thing I will say is um, Le- LeBron, not not my favorite uh, uh, guy, you know, so I'll just say that. But um, my my cut on this list, I'm going to have to go with Ben Wallace. Um, I mean, the guy is a four-time Defensive Player of the Year, though, so I can't. I'm not going to hold him too much. The guy is a four-time Defensive Player of the Year. That's the most tied for the most in NBA history. Um, you know, he's the only guy on this list too to like actually win a championship as like a a premier guy. You know, like he was an All Star that year. He was All NBA that same year. Um, you know, Yao didn't win one, and Dwight did win one, but he was let's face it, he was a shell of himself by the time he did. Um, you know, six-time All-Defensive. That's the most of anyone of the three on this list. Um, and he was just like an enforcer. Like, he'd be getting people's heads. You know, you wouldn't want to get matched up against him for sure because even though he was small, he played much bigger than his size. Actually, of all the people that have led the league in blocks per game over the years, he has uh, the highest – or he's the shortest player to lead the league in blocks per game for a season. Still holds to this day. So, I mean, that's just another thing as well. Um, and that wasn't even the year like they won the championship. But um, I think the one thing that's surprising about Ben Wallace is because he was so aggressive um, as a defender. Like he averages by far the least amount of fouls, like of the three. I think he averages less than two fouls per game in his career, and both Yao and Dwight average over three fouls a game. So I mean, definitely a very selective, defensive-minded uh, player, and. I mean, it's contributed to them also winning a championship in 2004, making the finals in 05, where they could have went back to back as well. Um, but the one reason I have to cut him is, I mean, the guy, he wasn't the first ballot Hall of Famer. In fact, I think it took him like about 10 years to make it, um, like five years after he was first eligible. Um, you know, where Yao, he was a first ballot Hall of Famer and Dwight isn't eligible yet, but I have a good feeling that he probably will be too. Um, but I just want to like, you know, give, You know, he's not the same offensive player that Dwight or Yao is either. But I do want to give him credit because if you think about this debate, I mean, you even said it, like, it's all pretty close. But Yao Ming, first overall pick in 2002. Dwight Howard, first overall pick in 2004. And Ben Wallace was not even drafted, right? Like, it's just crazy to think that he could even be in a discussion with two of these guys. And they're all probably top 150 players um, of all time, which that's an incredible feat for someone who went undrafted and eventually become an NBA Hall of Famer. So, unfortunately, I have to cut Big Ben, but that doesn't take away from how great he is. And so, now I'll give you the floor for who you are going to put on the bench. Okay, so my bench is also Ben Wallace, or not also, but my bench is Ben Wallace. And the thing about Ben 
is he's obviously not as offensive. Like he couldn't even average a double double because he never got to 10 points in his career. But he's a four time defensive player of the year, which makes me go over him. And he's not, like, I feel like compared to Yao, it was really close, but I took Dwight for the reasons I'll talk about when I talk to Dwight over him because the reason Ben was only a, um, he was really a defensive guy, but his team had defensive players around him. So Tayshawn Prince, Chauncey Billups were also the first team, second team NBA defense when he was on the team. So it's going to be even easier for him to play defense when he has guys around him. And I feel like that's something we talk about more with like the Warriors. If you have Draymond behind you, it's going to be easier to play defense and you can, you can hide guys like Steph and like that. So Ben, I have as my bench because I, I just think how he was available and he got that rank, which Yao didn't. But compared to Dwight, he doesn't have the offensive game and he couldn't even get to a double-double if that matters as much. Yeah, um, I, th- I think that's valid. Um, but who I have on my bench is actually Dwight Howard. Um, you know, while you can debate like his defense with Ben Wallace, I think his size advantage and um, you know better offensive production kind of gives him that edge. I mean, the guy was an eight-time All-Star, which is more than Ben, just as many as Yao, um, and also eight-time All-NBA. And then he made five all defensive as well, which um, it is less than Ben, which there's that. But I think, honestly, it might even be a little bit less than what people would have thought if they were just thinking, like, about Dwight Howard as a defensive player because he won defensive player of the year three times. Um, But I think the longevity argument is definitely the best one for Dwight considering, like, I mean, he hasn't played this season, but up until last year he was still playing. That was, like, 18 years worth. And I know Ben Wallace had a pretty lengthy career too, but – Again, like I just don't think he peaked offensively um, as Dwight did, and also Dwight was doing it defensively um, better than um, like the combination of offense and defense was better than that of Ben Wallace. I personally think um, he's easily the greatest athlete of the three on this list. Uh, best dunker too. I think he actually has the most total dunks as of today, like in NBA history, um, and he even won a dunk contest. So, I mean, <laughs> there's that. But um, no, I I think like too he led his team to the NBA Finals as the clear-cut best player. Um, You know, something that you could argue maybe Ben did, but I personally think probably Chauncey Billups was the best player on the Pistons when they made it those years. Um, And, of course, Yao Ming didn't. Part of that is because of, you know, injuries, but um, it still should be noted. But, um, you know, one thing, too, that Dwight has over these guys, he averaged a double-double for his career. But, I mean, like, the main knocks probably against Dwight – I would say is maybe his reputation as a teammate isn't really a good one. I mean, he had the stuff with Stan Van Gundy in Orlando, with LA, with Houston, even to a degree with Atlanta. I mean, it's kind of just like a bad track record. It's a little bit toxic. Um, You know, he's not a great free throw shooter. And I would say, even though he had more offensive production than Ben Wallace, I think his offensive capabilities are a little limited. Like his rim running is probably a little similar to Bam Adebayo, but I don't know if he's quite the same ball handler or even mid-range shooter as Bam, or free throw shooter as Bam. Um, now, granted, like probably none of these guys are going to be credited for their ball handling, at least. So, I mean, there's that. But I mean, shooting, like there probably is an argument to be made somewhere in in this uh, group of three guys. But um, overall, I mean, he is a top 100 player. I know a lot of people said he probably should have made the 75th anniversary team, um, but at the very least, he's a top 100 player, um, and. That's why I have him on my bench. But um, if you want, you can reveal with me who you have starting among these three. I kind of have a feeling who it is, but um, you can go ahead and reveal it. Yeah, as you said at the end, my main point for Joy is that I think he should have been on the top 75 all-time team, and I don't think the, the other two should have. The reason I think Joy should have made it, one, he played – for 15 years, but he didn't just play for 15 years, he had 15 strong seasons where he wasn't the best player on that championship team, but he was still a factor in helping LeBron get that fourth rank that fully counts. And Joy, um, as you said, eight time all, all NBA, three time defensive player of the year, or eight time defense, eight time all NBA. Eight time all NBA and five time yeah. defense, yeah. 
Yeah, eight ten NBA, like five ten defense, three ten defensive player of the year. He was great for from the time I was in preschool to the time I graduated college, which is a long time. And the difference between him and Yao, I know that NBA Hall of Fame is like it's kind of weird, but would Yao have made first ballot if he wasn't like the bring the NBA to another culture, which he did, and which is awesome. But I think that really helps him become first ballot because he had that such short career. If he played baseball, he wouldn't even be eligible for the Hall of Fame because I don't think he played 10 seasons. So that's why I have Dwight as my starter. Longevity, um, offensive game, led that Magic team to the finals, which in my opinion was not as close of a team as that Pistons team that Ben Wallace won. Yeah. Um, so as for me and who I have starting, I have Yao Ming, who I believe was just as big of a snub personally on the top 75 team or even more uh, than Dwight Howard personally. Um, I think when you look at these three, he's definitely the best scorer on this list. Um, I think he's definitely the most skilled on both ends on this list. Um, I know like maybe he's not the defender that Ben Wallace or Dwight Howard is, maybe not as athletic as they are but he still is a great defensive player and it's not just because of his size he also had great hands and good timing in the paint not like a supreme level defensive player but the fact that he was still a really good defensive player and also offensively I mean nobody could handle him you just had to pray that he wasn't going to make the shot because the dude's seven six and he has a feathery touch um I think there's that um I think also like I mean, just his his mid-range and his free throw percentage were exceptional, just not even just for a big man, but for anyone in the league. And that, to me, like tells me that this guy would probably have the easiest adjustment among different eras, especially today, especially when you see like load managing, like the guy always suffered like injuries over his career. Like we see players taking more games off. There probably won't be as huge of a demand. And because of that, I feel like he would be more able to thrive. Um, and when it comes to him and Dwight Howard, um, I personally think, you know, yeah, I get it. Like his influence maybe on a different culture had a big uh, effect, but I think that definitely plays a part, especially in the 75th anniversary team. That's one of the things they detail as like a key part as to why, why they picked the people they did. But when it comes to him against Dwight all time, uh, Yao Ming in nine games, Yao Ming was seven and two all time. Uh, he averaged 23 and a half points. Dwight only averaged 12. He averaged 10 and a half rebounds. Dwight averaged below 10. He averaged more than one assist. Dwight averaged less than that. Steals per game. Dwight averaged 1.3. Yao was 0.7. And actually, Yao averaged more blocks per game as well by about half a block a game. Um, you know, just his worst scoring game when they ever played against each other was higher than Dwight's average against <laughs> Yao Ming as well. So... I mean, both of them are eight-time All-Stars. Of course, Dwight did play like 10 more seasons, and he did make three more All-NBA teams. But overall, I think Yao's influence um, just on a different culture, like we said. Um, and also, in the last 30-plus years, he's the, he's the only player to ever make the All-Star team every year of his career, which I get it. Like Part of that is because of the fan voting and stuff. But I think of the seasons he played, maybe the only season you could argue he wasn't all-star worthy was that year last year where he only played like five games and i even that i can take that away from him that's completely fine because that's not an all-star in my opinion but he still had seven all-star caliber seasons um and was really good straight out of the gate um what i will say too uh in 2009 when dwight made the finals the rockets that year lost in seven to the lakers in the playoffs and that was the year the Lakers beat the Magic in the finals where Tracy McGrady was injured and Yao Ming was injured and they still went to seven with that team. So I think if personally, if they were healthy, they would have got to the finals. And based on that track record right there of him and Dwight going against each other, I would probably take uh, Yao Ming and the Houston Rockets uh, to win that series. So, I mean, personally, I mean, watching him growing up, he has a huge global impact. Um, definitely one of my favorite players as well I don't think he has the um you know he's probably the easiest player to be a teammate with of these three too because with Ben Wallace like we have incidents like the Malice and the Palace and then like for Dwight Howard it's like we got the Stan Van Gundy thing the James Harden Steve Nash like there was kind of like 
a rift between those situations as well. But um, I love to watching Yao. I still enjoy watching Yao's highlights to this day. Um, and I think he's one of the rarest players we've ever seen. I don't think we've ever seen a player with even Wembenyama, who's going to get drafted really soon. Like, he has almost the same height as Yao, but he doesn't quite have the stature of Yao and, the, like, the build, the size of him, and also the two-way capabilities all put into one. You know, he has parts of that, bits and pieces of that, but I don't know. That's personally what I see out of Yao Ming, um, and that's why I'm starting him. But overall, I don't know. Do you have any other... Uh, final thoughts I guess before we close this one out yeah I think it's fun to use you know the nine game sample size of his career but you got to dig deeper into there and see you know maybe maybe he was hurt in the beginning of the game maybe you don't know what happened in these games so I'll have to check out see how he got there but as you said Yao is so skilled and his highlight tape is really fun to watch and maybe if this was a three on three half court tournament then I'd choose Yao Ming as my starter but considering just how long and how healthy Dwight has been and how Dwight was able to stay healthy during those playoff runs. So we can't use the excuse if Dwight stayed healthy during that run, then they would have won. So that's my reason why I would take Dwight over Yeah, I think like, at least, I mean, I'm only speaking for myself, but I think personally the best argument that can be made is that if you want someone who's willing to sacrifice the most, you would probably lean toward Ben Wallace. If you want someone who's maybe going to give you the best short-term product, you'd lean toward maybe Yao. But if you want someone who you can rely on longer term, you would probably pick Dwight. Um, that's probably the best way I could put it. Um, and even not everyone's going to agree with that still. But um, it is what it is. Um, other than that, though, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed. And, I mean, yeah, that's basically going to do it. So thank you guys for watching. And we're out. Peace. Peace.